thank you. Mm, I'm Lukasz Lipski. I'm an IT infrastructure specialist working at Nordea IT Poland. We're a small, well, medium-sized company providing IT services for our Nordic colleagues in Nordea Bank Sweden. And we're also supporting all the branches, all the bank branches in Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. Up until recently, we also supported the Polish branches, but as you might probably know, uh, Nordia Bank Poland was sold and is no more. Zabbix in our company is the primary monitoring solution. And although we are using several others, uh, we are always uh, focused on feeding all the critical, all the mission critical data into Zabbix. And so uh, <coughs> we use it for our key systems. Uh, our, the whole of our Unix infrastructure, our core banking systems, uh, all of our network card traffic, and uh, our e-banking sites. Even though we are using Dynatrace to monitor real user activity, we are always feeding the data, the critical data, back into Zabbix. Right now, I'll be delivering a short talk on monitoring payment queues with uh, IBM's MQ Q Manager solution. This is going to be a short 20 minute talk focusing on one product, but hopefully it will be at least partially applicable to other Q, Q based solutions. And uh, my aim during this talk would be to mm, present a way in which you can monitor the most with the least effort on your side. So you can look at it at uh, how to monitor 80% of the critical stuff with the 20% of your effort. Let's start with the basics. When it comes to IBM MQ, uh, it's been around for a while. And uh, to be honest, it has changed its name more than the product has actually changed itself. And uh, IBM's MQ is quite popular nowadays. It's quite reliable, and as everything provided by IBM is uh, quite strange. Uh, most of the strangeness comes from the simple fact that uh, although this messaging solution was introduced to the general public in 1992, uh, the core architecture remains the same since 1970, I don't know, 75, 78. So it's a very old mainframe based and mainframe mainframe based solution with the legacy of the mainframe still intact inside the code <coughs> let's say you have an IBM MQ system in your company and want, you want to introduce monitoring as quick as possible here's the basic checklist you should be looking at the MQ file system space obviously it's usually var MQM you should be looking at the global error reports and uh, it's quite convenient because every time something happens IBM lets you know uh, by dumping the data into a separate file so you should be looking for new .fdc files under the default directory var MQM errors you should be also looking at the queue manager status and the local QM error reports which are the same FDC error files but under a separate directory localized to your queue manager. Two other things, you should be looking at the status of your listener process, so you can be sure that your clients can connect to your queue manager, and you should be closely watching the channel status. The first two metrics are self-explanatory and it's quite obvious how you would monitor it with the Zabbix. When it comes to the other three, we usually rely on the binaries provided by IBM. So for queue manager status, you can either use DDS, DSPMQ or you could pipe the ping queue manager command to your runmqsc console. The same goes for monitoring the listener status. You can either look for the listener process in your process list or you could use runmqsc. And as for the channel status, in order to make sure that all your channels are up and running, you should probably use RunMQSC. Aside from those five key metrics, 
you should also be focused on monitoring two things per each queue, per each local queue that you have defined and uh, you're using for your messages. You should be monitoring the number of messages on queue, the current depth, and uh, in combination with the queue capacity, which, which probably shouldn't change as much, this would give us another key metric, the percentage fill of the queue. So those five items, those two items, and the calculated percentage fill, this already gives you probably most of the stuff you will need. So how can we improve this bare bones setup further? Let's look at the message flow. Let's look at this Q depth metric that we introduced. When we're looking at the graphs provided by Zabbix, we see that the expected output should look like this. Something puts the message on the queue and some other client unloads the messages from the queue. So you should expect that the queue fills and then empties again. You could start with a very simple basic trigger. You could look for the queue depth in the last 20 minutes and see if it has dropped to zero. And if your queue load is very low and you're not using your queues very intensely, this probably should work. But in most environments, this would be un insufficient. So why? When we look at this chart and we focus on the time period between 1425 and 1445, we see that we have around 20 minutes in which we haven't reached zero, actually, but everything is fine with our queue because something puts the messages on the queue and the clients unload the messages. So what we should actually look for is not whether or not our queue has emptied fully, but we should look for the drops. If within our time period we observed some drops, it's probably a sign that everything's fine. So in order to revise our trigger expression, we need to add, unfortunately, we, we need to add a coupled calculated item with the following formula. It's basically just delta, but we need the sign too, so it's written using the simple arithmetic expression. And when we have this calculated item stored, we revise the trigger expression to combine both the, the check that the queue depth is above zero and the check that there was no drop in those 20 minutes of time. And this should probably be sufficient for your needs because the one thing you should be worrying about is something like this, when over a prolonged period of time the tendency is just to rise and never to drop. This usually means that something isn't eating the messages on your queue. This probably covers all your bases. So how, still keeping in mind that we are looking at how to monitor your queues with a minimal effort, how with a minimal effort we could improve it even further, well, the solution I'm about to propose is to use loadable modules introduced in 2.2, which are, as I'm, I will try to show, which are very easy to wrap around existing C code. And the boilerplate code is very simple, and uh, by looking at the examples provided by Zabbix, you, you would see that there are only a few several lines of code you need to add to your actual C code. And this will give us noticeable performance gains. So let's focus on the second sentence, that they are very easy to wrap around existing C code. So where do we get this existing C code? Existing C code is already given to us together with the IBM MQ. IBM provides code samples and one of them checks all of the queues, all of the local queues for their depth. And in order to adapt this example, 
you need to only change a few lines of code. Don't focus on the code, the code will be available. Let's say you've modified the sample and you've got the C program that checks the current depth of one single queue. I've told you that it's very easy to wrap around the code. The only thing you would need to add is this hash of the metrics your module supports, in our case just the one metric, and this is what you need to wrap your code around the code for the method that gives you the metric. What about those performance gains? Well, when we compare a simple shell script that we might use that gathers queue depth for a given queue using the default queue manager, and we compare a thousand runs of this shell script with the compiled C code, we, s we can easily see that it's more than twice as fast. And Rapigant in a module is even more effective because Zabbix agent doesn't need to fork to the shell to spawn this process. But let me return to the sentence I said about using the least effort to give you as much as possible regarding IBM MQ monitoring. Where is this the least amount of effort when you have to write your own C code? Well, you don't have to write it. Everything is under Zabbix share, the initial version, uh, the sample shell script, the sample C code, and the sample Zabbix module code. It's all under Zabbix share. So you should probably add some more error checking because I'm only checking for errors after MQ connection and after MQ execute, but it should serve as a viable starting point for your purposes. So, any questions? Okay, so thank you for, for the great talk. Uh, I'm just wondering who is doing uh, actual C development? Is it the part of the monitoring team or it's, uh, it's you? <laughs> Yours truly, yeah. Okay. But uh, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't call it C development because when you compare, when you look at this IBM sample, and you, you don't need to have MQ installed on your system. You don't even to have MQ installed on any system. Those uh, code samples are provided by IBM Online, so you can just download this example that shows mm -hmm. all the queue depths for the queues and you compare this with uh, my C example, and you, you, you will see that I haven't done much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, well, but anyway, you still need some knowledge to, I don't know, even to, to have uh, IBM dev environment in place and things like that. I would say that uh, if you're in operations, mm -hmm. uh, the main problem if you, for example, have MQ on IX, is that you need to have access to the host running IBM IX and that has uh, compilers installed in order for you to compile the code. But in order for you to use the code, since it's provided in Zabbix yeah. share, it's, it's uh, only a question of asking someone who has uh, a, a development environment on your target operating system who could compile the Zabbix module. Okay, okay, thank you, thanks. Yeah? What are the dependencies for these solutions? Uh, Is it the necessary to install some MQ series clients or You will have to similar? use uh, the MQ library. Um, all of the headers are exactly the same as the ones at the top of this uh, mentioned sample script. There are actually three headers, one for general MQ related stuff, one for MQ I specific stuff and one for um, and the third one for the um, inquiry stuff. So there are three headers from IBM and you would need the flag uh, that tells your compiler to use the MQ library. So uh, I'm not talking about the dependencies associated with the Zabbix module because they are well very minimal. Uh, the only uh, dependency would be the MQ library. 
so which is present on uh, every M MQ system and uh, uh, you can actually, I believe you can download the MQ developers edition for free from IBM's site and you would have this library as well. So you can uh, compile the binary under Linux yourself on your laptop. Yeah? Uh, how do you handle the possible timeouts uh, when you're communicating with the MQ server? Is it done on uh, library level or you have to do this uh, by yourself? <clears throat> if by yourself, how you do that? It's done on the library level, in, in short. Uh, it's wrapped around by the library. You need to, if you need to specify your own timeout, uh, you would have to do this in your code, but um, the library handles this stuff. But still, mm, you should probably add checking of the uh, disconnect reason and uh, the error message included. And you should probably pass it around to Zabbix in order to have the full information which MQ call did timed out. And uh, keep in mind that uh, this is a short talk and this is a, uh, this is a short workaround type solution. What you would probably want, if you would uh, want to take this further, you would want to measure not the current queue depth, not only the current queue depth, but uh, the actual queue throughput. And in this way, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, this calculated item approach and checking whether the flow uh, changes. You would actually measure the throughput and see if something goes on on your queues. But unfortunately, since this is an IBM provided solution, measuring queue throughput, measuring everything else is done by interacting with MQ through MQ and uh, by enabling statistics and then by writing your own C code to uh, gather those statistic messages, uh, writing your own parser to um, gather the data from the statistics message and so on and so on. So this is the 80% and 20% of the time, but uh, there is actually this 20% stuff left to do. But I think this would be appropriate for most setups. Thank you.